Hey everyone, hi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to show you books I bought recently and I'm going to take you book shopping with me. It's going to be a little bit vloggy, a little bit, uh, a little bit just it has this video has everything to do with like books shopping buying selling a day out and recent purchases so um if you're new to my channel then hi i'm shelly and i really love books and reading i enjoy making videos which is what this channel is all about and um if you like the vibe i would encourage you to subscribe stick around and without any further rambling on let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Let me tell you about the order of events so I can fix it into my mind and then um, and that'll that'll kind of help me say or me stay organized. So I'm going to show you books that I bought recently um, and then I'm going to show you some of my unhaul stack in case you want to know what I'm getting rid of. Then I will show you my outfit of the day, take you shopping with me, and then I will end the video back here uh, probably looking a little more mussed up and lived in <laughs> uh, with the books that I bought if I ended up buying any. So um, the books that my, my one book rule, I guess before I show you the books I'm going to buy, I'm going to tell you my book, one book, one, my one book buying rule. Oh my goodness. So my one book buying rule is to only buy as many books as I'm reading off my shelves. So um, right now I have a credit of two, but like I can buy two books because I have otherwise purchased as many books as I've read off my shelves. But I've I will almost have read three. I will almost have a credit of three books. This has really been working for me because it's holding me to a. I don't buy just willy-nilly. I don't just buy unabashedly anymore. I really am more strategic about what I buy. I say a lot, know a lot more and but there's enough wiggle room that I do make more risky pur purchases. So the first book I've already showed actually on this channel but it's Anya Se Seton's Catherine and this is the reason why I almost have the opportunity to buy three books and I might actually buy three books today because I might just count this as finished because I'm only like 60 pages from the end. So I will finish this either today or tomorrow. It just depends on what the bookstore is offering. I'm going to a used bookstore. It'll just depend on the what it, what they're offering. You probably don't care. This is uh this is an um it was this was published in the 1960s. Um and it is a classic uh, what we would call a classic of historical fiction. Um and it is talking about the grand love affair of the Duke of Lancaster and Catherine. Um, and it, it's beautiful, wonderful. Her writing is fantastic. I'm really loving this. Um, yeah, so I've, I'm almost done with this. I bought this actually, I don't know, when I started reading it. Like I was starting to read it on my Kindle and I was like, I must have a paper copy. So I bought this copy knowing that I was going to read it right then and there. And I'm reading this with my friend Anita, who is a wonderful, who is wonderful, amazing, and such a pleasure to read with. Next up, I have another classic work of historical fiction, and it is Dorothy Dunnett's The Game of Kings, which I may read this for the historical fiction event that's going on right now that I am hosting. Um, I've just heard that she's fan freaking tastic, and I don't say that lightly. I mean, people, I guess fans of hers get this sparkle in their eye. She has, she's mostly known for her five or six book series, um, and it's something something kings i don't know but again this was published a while ago i bought this used on amazon oh the linman chronicles she's mostly known for her linman chronicles but she has three or four different series and apparently she's supposed to be amazing you know she anyways just amazing okay next i actually picked up a classic classic this is did it win the pulitzer i don't really know Hmm. I'm not going to look too much into it because I don't want to read the back, but I bought Eudora Welty's The, Opt the Optimist's Daughter, Eudora Welty. <laughs> she is an American classic. Uh, she, I don't know, apparently her writing is amazing. It's, it's slow. Um, from what I've heard, it's slow, yet wise. And then the final book that I purchased, actually, I didn't purchase this. I got this for free, but it still counts as a book that came into my collection, um, and it counts against like the books that are, you, you know what I mean like I have checks and balances <laughs> so anyways um I have um the spirit catches you and you fall down um this was recommended this was recommended by Hannah from Hannah's books and it is her most recommended book she did a tag recently 
and she said that she has recommended this book more than any other book. Um, her husband read it, she read it, a bunch of their colleagues read it. Uh, it's just a thing. And it's about, it's about um, Laos, the, a, a La Laos, oh my goodness, I have an itchy nose and I want to scratch it, but I'm like, I don't want to be rude. Give me a second. No, it's a La Laos. I also was like stumbling on the pronunciation. It's a Laos family um, who has a child who I believe is suffering from seizures and the clash of, of the um, like um, modern medical facility or medical opinions against the Laos culture and their religion. And it's about that conflict and, and you know, I don't know, I'm maybe trying to find common ground, I'm not really sure, but when Hannah was like, I have recommended this book more than any others, I was like, I must, <laughs> I must know. So actually I, I saw it at a book, used bookstore and I was like, it is meant to be. It is meant to be. So I'm getting it right now. Um, a nonfiction book, supposed to be fantastic. So those are the books that I bought recently. And then I will show you some of my unhaul books. The first are Jonathan Franzen. I thought Jonathan Franzen might be a author for me. I, 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 you know, I don't know. I'm gonna say like when I look at these collection, when I look at his books in my collection, I feel literally nothing. I actually feel a bit of disdain because I don't want to read him. And, and you know, I'm well, I am, I might change my mind. And actually his books are very, 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 very easy to find. Also one of my friends, uh, Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot read, I think she read Freedom by Jonathan, Fran Jonathan Franzen and she was like, just some, some of the stuff in it was just not to her liking. So I have the corrections and freedom and I'm like, goodbye. Uh, you know, nice to meet you, goodbye. Um, without really knowing you. And I'm okay with that. Um, and then I also have some books that I have read that I didn't really care for. And I have um, Hausfrau by Jill Alexander Esbaum. I like this. I, I didn't love the way it ended. Um, and not enough for me to want to keep it around to reread it. So that's going to go. Um, and then I also have The Fraud by Zadie Smith, which I read and I I thought her writing was good. <laughs> but the story was not. Um, and then I also have a book that I own on Kindle now. And so I'm actually just going to get rid of the hardcover because I'm more likely going to read it on Kindle. And it's Ava Luna by Isabel Allende. So I have a small stack of books that I'm unhauling that I just don't want in my collection anymore. Some that I've read, some that I haven't. And I'm very great. I feel like a little bit of a weight is being lifted off having these out of my collection. So I actually have even more books that I'm unhauling, but I have to be strategic <laughs> because there are several used bookstores that I can get credit from. And so I'm doling up my unhauls in a very sort of strategic manner. Um, and there's one particular used bookstore uh, that sells mostly paperbacks that I'm saving my largest stack for. Um, but yeah, the bookstore that we're going to is called the Bookworm Bookstore, I think it's called. Um, it's about 30 minutes away. We're going to make the trek down. And then also, like, I got ready and I filmed it. So <laughs> I am wearing this incredibly adorable, thrifted, cherry red linen dress. It is so perfect. I actually took it in on the sides um, near the armpit area because the uh, bust of the dress was a little bit too big for me and I took it in so that it fits better. I'm wearing them with these platform Crocs that I get so many questions about. Everybody has questions about them. They say those look comfortable and all of that. Um, they are really kind. These shoes are very, very kind to my feet and mostly kind to my knee. I have one trick knee. I've had a couple surgeries on it when I was a, a girl, just a young person, and it tends to give me some issues if I'm not wearing the proper shoes. Um, and so these Crocs are perfect. They give me some height. They give me almost like a, a 70s feel and I love them. And then I have a little giblet on it, I think it's called, um, which is the uh, Mario, a student gave that to me um, to dress up my Crocs, you know? And then I'm wearing uh, just a, a stack of bracelets, which I've been enjoying putting on lately and some beautiful gold, gold hoops. And I'm using this massive tote that was given to me by another student, uh, Fun in the Sun tote, that I'm going to use to carry my discarded books to the bookstore and hopefully carry some books back. We're also looking for books for my kids. There's no rules really about buying kids books. Um, I'm hoping that my older son who's eight will find some books that he loves. And uh, yeah, we'll just see. We'll see how it goes, but I'm excited to start this journey with you. 
All right, so I'm back and it was a really, really awesome trip. Um, I actually only did buy two books. So I have a very small clip, which I'm probably rolling now, of the bookstore and I kind of show you what they have to offer. It's not the biggest bookstore, but it's also not the smallest bookstore. They took, I don't know, a good portion of the books that I had to sell back to them and gave me back a couple that I'll try and sell back to someone else or pop into a little free library. Doesn't really matter to me. Um, so I only paid um, half of my bill because half of it could be credit. Half I can, half of my bill I can pay in credit and the other half I paid with my own money. So I didn't spend very much money. Uh, my son wanted a dog man book, <laughs> which I'm like, Okay, whatever you want to read. Um, it was really cute. Oh, and um, I have a clip of Dee filming me, and I'm just going to put the whole thing in because I thought it was really cute. What are you looking at? What am I looking at? Yeah. I'm looking at you. <laughs> what book are you looking at? Take it out. Well, I'm looking at different things. What about you? Pull it, one out. Pull it out. Yeah. I'm selling this one back. Uh, uh, Yep. What about you? What are you doing? I'm uh, taking camera of you. What? Taking camera of you. You're taking care of me. Um, no, doing the camera of you. Oh, the camera of me. Okay. All right, turn it off now. Okay. Bye. 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 All right, so I did indeed pick up a couple books. I picked up two books. The first one is Mistress at the Mistress of the Ritz. <laughs> So this is, this is a Steve Donahue influenced by, it made number one uh, of his historical fiction reads in like 2016. It's, I don't know, I, want, I don't want to say it's not something I would normally pick up, but it's a World War II historical fiction book and it looks kind of basic, but, but hear me out. I trust Steve, so I think this will be good. I actually read the first teeny little bit of this and I thought it was interesting. Um, so this is literally how it starts. Blanche, it says Lily, like Lily up top. Blanche is dead. Sometimes death is a mercy, and I believe this is true for her because she was once so vibrant and spirited, and that's how I'll remember her. I have so many memories of Blanche. Blanche singing a sailor's sea shanty with a glass of champagne balanced on the back of her hand. Yeah, so I was like, huh, huh. Interesting. This takes place uh, during, right before World, World War II. World War II breaks out um, during this time. The, their, the main couple couple is Clyde, Claude, Claude, and, or Clyde, Claude, and Blanche. And they, um, he, the husband, Claude, uh, he is the director of the very Shenazi Hotel, uh, the Ritz. Um, and so they're in Paris at the Ritz and World War II begins and it's like, will this break their marriage? So I don't know. I don't know. And then our first section is Lily and then it goes to Blanche, but Lily is not mentioned on the back of the book. So already wondering about how I should put these pieces together. I don't know. So I guess we'll just see. So here, here's this. And then the second book, which I think I'm more excited about because it's, I don't know. I, I read about this and I was like, that looks really good. The whole series was the whole series was recommended by Steve Donahue. The first book, which they had in my favorite format, is The Half Drowned King by Lene Hartsuker. Here's what part of the back says. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but maybe for you to get a little sense. So it's Regnanbald, descendant of kings, grew up believing that he would one day take his dead father's place as chief of his family's lands. But sailing home from a raiding trip to Ireland, the young warrior is betrayed and left for dead by men in a pay of his, in, in the pay of his greedy stepfather, Olaf. Oh, why are all the bad guys named Olaf? Okay, it says, uh, oh, Ragnar Bob danced on the oars, leaping from one to the next as the crew rowed. Some kept their oars steady to make it easier for him. Some tried to jostle Ragnan involved off when he landed on them. Ooh, I like that. He's already got some spunk in the first couple sentences. So, 
And this is the trilogy. This is book one in the trilogy. And I'm excited. I'm excited to have it. All right. So these, these were my scores for today. That's it. Let me know what you've bought recently. Let me know how you like this format of video. I imagine that there's really like maybe one or two more bookstores I want to go to once I've built up a little bit of credit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't get to go book shopping very often in the, during the week, during school, school year. I'm just too busy. It's just, it takes such a chunk out of my day. It takes a couple hours to go to any like pretty good bookstore out of my day. And so that's always kind of difficult to navigate. So I like doing these during the summer. That's what I'm trying to say. Vlogginess during the summer. Let me know if you like it. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Thank you.